Here on Two Guys Tech, we've had the opportunity to review a lot of home theater equipment, and some of our most popular videos have been centered around entry-level, budget-friendly gear. So today, we're going to be going over what we feel are some of the best options available if you're wanting to put together a new home theater system at an affordable price. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then stick around and we'll get into it right after the intro. Alright, so first off, we want to go over some of the basic components that we feel you're going to need in order to build a complete home theater system. And the first thing that we recommend you look into are your base level speakers like your left, center, and right channels, as well as any surround channels. And the reason that we start with these speakers is because they end up dictating a lot of your other purchasing decisions. For example, the sensitivity and power rating of your speakers will be a major factor when choosing a receiver. Once you've decided on your base level speakers, the next thing that you're going to need to consider is your subwoofer, or subwoofers if you choose to go that route. Obviously, there's a lot to cover with subs, and we'll get into some of our recommendations in a minute. And with those, the rest of your components are also going to be pretty easy. You're going to need a receiver to process and amplify everything, a display to watch your content, and a source to actually play your movies and TV shows. Next, we do want to sort of explain our thought process behind the products that we're going to suggest and recommend. And the first thing that we want to clarify right now is that we'll only be recommending a product if it's something that we've reviewed ourselves. On the other hand, if we just make a suggestion, then it's a product that we haven't reviewed, but we feel you should definitely take a look at or try out for yourself based on other popular reviews and the general consensus around how good the product is. Another thing that we want to touch on is that these systems we're talking about today offer what we feel is the best bang for your buck, but of course this is just our opinion, and this is all based on our likes, tastes, and experiences. Everyone has their own idea of what a budget or entry level system should cost, depending on how much money they want to spend, or how much they can afford, which is perfectly fine. But with all that out of the way, let's take a look at our first category, which as I already mentioned, is going to be speakers. We've reviewed a lot of different 5.1 systems here on our channel, and the ones that we're going to list here are in no particular order, but uh, the four most popular budget surround sound systems that we've reviewed are the RSL CG3 5.1, the Emotiva Air Motive 5.1, the SVS Prime Satellite 5.1, and of course the Costco Klipsch 5.0.2 Dolby Atmos surround sound system. All four of these systems have some distinct advantages and disadvantages, which we'll go ahead and talk about right now. Starting with the RSL CG3 5.1, this is a pretty compact 5.1 surround sound system taking advantage of RSL's compression guide cabinet technology to get very smooth and detailed bass response from each speaker. The two biggest things that stand out to us with this system are the included RSL Speedwoofer 10S and the dedicated CG23 speaker which is used as a center channel in the setup. This entire package feels and sounds like quite a nice setup, and for $1,079 MSRP, you get a lot for your money, and we think it comes with one of the best budget subs in its class. Now, RSL's prices and availability do seem to be changing quite a lot because these are some very popular speakers and subwoofers. And with the supply chain issues that we've been seeing for the last few months, we can recommend that you go ahead and check RSL's website to get the most current pricing and availability on any of their products. With the RSL system out of the way though, one of our favorite budget systems is the Emotiva Air Motive 5.1 with their SE12 subwoofer. At $1,600, it is more expensive than the other systems here, but it does offer some pretty neat features and great sound quality at that price. The 5.1 setup that we reviewed had a pair of T1 Plus towers, along with their C1 Plus center channel and B1 Plus bookshelf speakers, as well as the aforementioned SE12 subwoofer. As we mentioned in our review, we were really happy with the way these speakers sounded for both movies and music. The nice thing is, Emotiva offers a lot of other models in the Airmotive line which all match thanks to their high quality ribbon tweeter. So if you want to start with a basic 5.1 surround sound system and eventually add Dolby Atmos speakers, uh, all of their in-sealing and reflective Atmos speakers have the same tweeter and they'll match perfectly with the rest of the system. Next is the SVS Prime Satellite 5.1 which is another very compact 5.1 surround system uh, with five rear-ported SVS Prime Satellite speakers and one SVS SV1000 Pro subwoofer. 
And in our opinion, this is another great little subwoofer that if you were to purchase alone would end up costing you $599. With a total cost of $1199, you get a pretty robust system. But again, because of the supply chain issues that I mentioned earlier, the cost of this system has gone up by $200 from the time that we made our review last year. Other than that, SVS also offers a lot more speakers, which means that you have many more options if and when you decide to upgrade. For example, down the road, if you wanted to upgrade to a 7.1 surround, all you'd need to do is add something like a Prime Center and a pair of Prime Bookshelf speakers, which we also reviewed and we thought sound great. But again, most of these products have gone up in price. And finally, the last system that we want to quickly touch on is the Klipsch Reference Series 5.0.2 Dolby Atmos Surround Sound from Costco. And this one is pretty unique for a few reasons. You can usually find it at your local Costco warehouse or Costco.com, and unlike the other options that I mentioned, it doesn't actually include its own subwoofer. But on the flip side, it does have built-in Dolby Atmos speakers. The draw to this system is that you're getting the classic look and feel of large Klipsch tower speakers rather than the smaller satellite speakers that are used in both the RSL and SVS systems. It's also really nice that you get those built-in Dolby Atmos channels, meaning you can take advantage of a Dolby Atmos receiver, and aside from that, the system is the only one that also includes magnetic grills for every speaker, which just makes it feel a bit more premium. The system is also one of the most affordable surround sound setups that we reviewed, coming in at a regular price of $899, but you can often find it on sale for as low as $699, which is very impressive for what you get. Now, we said that this was going to be the last system that we covered in this video, but we did originally consider another contender, the Klipsch Reference Cinema 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos Home Theater Pack, which was just released somewhat recently at Costco stores. But after doing a little bit of research, we decided not to give it our suggestion. Of course, we haven't heard the system, so we can't comment on the sound quality, but the build quality and materials used seem to be pretty subpar. Uh, for example, the center channel only weighs 7.4 pounds, which is not very impressive. For $849, you're getting a total of 39 pounds worth of plastic speakers with a pretty small MDF subwoofer that weighs in at 25 pounds which you're forced to purchase with this system. Compare that to the system that we reviewed, which weighs in at 140 pounds without a subwoofer. Each one of the speakers that we reviewed have full MDF cabinets with proper binding posts, which are just features that you won't get with this newer Klipsch system. If you have any experience with the 5.1.4 package, we'd love to know what you think about it, but for now, we're gonna take a hard pass on this little setup. All right, so now that we've mentioned some of the strengths of each of these systems, let's discuss some of their weaknesses as well. Kicking things off with the RSL, you don't have nearly as much of an upgrade path because they only build the CG3 and CG5 series of speakers, while all of the other manufacturers we mentioned offer different speakers to upgrade your system with. The RSLs are also slightly more expensive than the others, and they're only available in this glossy finish, which some people might not like due to the additional upkeep. With that said, you do also get the Speedwoofer 10S, which is a very impressive product in its own right. The SVS, Klipsch, and Emotiva speakers are also all rear ported, unlike the RSL speakers, which are ported out the front, and this basically means that the other speakers don't give you as many placement options as the RSL. Uh, but as we mentioned, we also like the fact that RSL includes a CG23 speaker as the center channel, while SVS includes the same prime satellite speaker for each channel, which may not look good depending on your setup. Moving on to the Klipsch system, it's pretty important to note here that this setup does not include a subwoofer right out of the box. And to our ears, the mid-range isn't quite as smooth and refined as the speakers in the other systems that we mentioned. You also get the built-in Dolby Atmos channels in the R625 FA towers, which in our opinion is not the best way to implement Atmos. If you don't want Atmos, or if you're planning on upgrading to ceiling Atmos speakers in the future, you're still stuck paying extra for these Atmos channels, whether you want them or not. On the other hand, with Emotiva and their setup, configured the way we reviewed it with the T1 Plus towers, ends up being the most expensive system in our list. Now, a lot of our audience probably want to know which one of these systems we prefer over the other, and to be completely honest, that's a very hard question to answer. As we mentioned, all of these speakers have their own pros and cons, and we just hit on the things that matter to us, which may or may not matter to you. 
This topic is incredibly subjective, and there's no way for us to fairly choose a clear winner. That's why we always recommend testing speakers for yourself in your own space. I know it's a pain in the rear, but that's really the only way you can know for sure if you're picking the right speakers or if you might be missing out. All right, so let's go ahead and shift gears a little bit and talk about the subwoofers that go with these systems and why they might also be great choices if you're putting together a budget system. Subwoofers are included right out of the box with both the RSL and SVS packages. RSL gives you the Speedwoofer 10S and SVS gives you the SB1000 Pro. But the biggest difference between the two is that the Speedwoofer 10S is a ported cabinet design while the SB1000 Pro is a sealed box design. Emotiva also offers their Airmotive SE12 with a 12 inch passive radiator, but you do have to buy it separately from the speakers. Either way, this means that the Speedwoofer 10S will give you slightly more output, but the SB1000 Pro will give you slightly tighter, more controlled bass, with the SE12 sitting somewhere kind of in the middle. Between these three subwoofers, the SE12 is the cheapest option, coming in at a flat $399 followed by the Speedwoofer 10S at 430, while the SB1000 Pro is going to run you $599 for the premium black ash model. But for that extra $170 over the Speedwoofer 10S, you also get some nice features like wireless app control, built-in DSP, and a larger 12-inch driver compared to the Speedwoofer's 10-inch driver. Of course, you can buy any of these subwoofers separately and pair them with any of the speaker systems you want to get the best sound for your room. But we do also have to mention the Klipsch subwoofer. Uh, if you want to buy the Klipsch system from Costco and you also want a matching sub, you have a couple of different options. The Klipsch R12SW, which is sold at Costco, and the Klipsch R120SW, which you would have to buy from another retailer. When you purchase the Klipsch system from Costco, the box itself has a section recommending the Klipsch R12SW, which comes in at $250 MSRP, but as we mentioned in our review, the subwoofer does not match aesthetically. In terms of sound, being the cheapest sub, the R12SW is kind of underwhelming compared to the other options. It has a built-in 200 watt RMS amplifier, it's got one big rear port to help increase bass response, but it lags behind the other subwoofers in the quality of bass you get. It has that one note sort of bass and an overall lack of articulation that doesn't really sound good at all for music, and we'd personally recommend any of the other subwoofers if you're willing to spend the extra money. We haven't had a chance to hear the higher end Klipsch R120SW, but given the fact that it has a better 400 watt RMS amplifier, we think it's definitely an interesting option, especially if you want a subwoofer that matches the Costco Klipsch speakers perfectly. With that said, if you want a more in-depth look at any of these subwoofers, we'll be sure to leave links to both our reviews and even a comparison of some of these subwoofers down in the description below, so you can go ahead and check those out. And that's pretty much it for all the speakers and subwoofers in a home theater setup. Meaning next, we're going to want to talk about receivers. In the past, we've reviewed four very popular AVRs from Costco, like the Yamaha RX-V6A, also known as the TSR700, as well as the Onkyo TX-NR595, the Denon AVR-S750H, and the Denon AVR-S760H. All of these receivers are absolutely great for the money in their own right, and we've actually seen some pretty fierce debate between commenters on our channel about which receiver is best. But more recently, one of these receivers that we've reviewed has topped all of them, and you'll see why in a bit. It is worth mentioning here that the Yamaha receiver claimed to fix support for HDMI 2.1 features like 4K 120Hz output in a firmware update because some people were having problems with certain HDMI 2.1 devices, but unfortunately that never panned out. Instead, Yamaha is offering an HDMI board replacement program for the RX V6A and models like it to fix this issue. So for now, if you're getting an RX V6A, just know that it does not have HDMI 2.1 capabilities unless you qualify for an HDMI board replacement in your region. With all that said, a lot of your choice with these receivers is going to come down to availability, especially if you're trying to get that much lower Costco price. A lot of retailers might have only one or two of these receivers in stock, which limits your options by a lot. If you want to see each of our individual reviews on these AVRs, we'll leave links down in the description below so you can check those out. We feel that for the price, any of these AVRs offer a great entry-level home theater experience, but there are some things to consider. 
First off, the Ankyo receiver that we reviewed was a 2019 model, so it has older features compared to the other receivers. There were also some concerns that Ankyo might have been going through some financial issues, but thankfully that doesn't seem to have been the case, and they're going to be launching some new HDMI 2.1 receivers for 2022. But in our opinion, honestly, none of these things really matter right now since the launch of Denon's AVR S760H, which as far as we can tell, is the only budget AVR currently on the market right now that has full verified support for HDMI 2.1, 4K at 120Hz with both the PS5 and Xbox Series X. This is huge for a lot of people and it means that you can get the most out of your next gen console with one of these affordable AVRs. Other than that, in terms of sound, it's pretty much the same as an AVR S750H, which we thought sounded the best out of all of the budget receivers that we've mentioned. In the end, we feel that all of these receivers would be good choices, but the S760H is leading the pack right now as far as value goes, thanks to its future proofing. With that said, if you need an AVR right now, and any of these are in stock, you can't go wrong, especially if you buy from Costco. So that pretty much wraps up our recommendations for a basic budget home theater build. This gets you into your speakers, subwoofer, and AV receiver, which are pretty much the biggest home theater exclusive components. Now the rest of the things that we're going to be talking about are suggestions rather than recommendations. And obviously on top of the main three topics that we've already discussed, you're going to need some sort of a display as well as a media source to watch all of your content from. We're not going to be delving into any specific models of display because a lot of people already have a display and there are so many choices in terms of TVs and projectors that we couldn't possibly mention them all in one video. With that said, if you go with something like a smart TV or a smart projector in your home theater setup, then you already have both your media device and display in one package rather than having to get them separately. For example, this is what we did in our living room where we have a Sony X900H that comes with Android TV built in. And because of this, we don't have to purchase any other type of device to stream movies with. On the other hand, in our main theater here, we chose to go with a projector that doesn't have any smart features built in. So in this case, we're using an Nvidia Shield Android TV box to stream movies in the theater. Another thing to consider with a projector is that you'll have to get a separate screen to project the image on, which means added cost and setup. On the upside, you also have the potential of getting a way bigger image. But with that said, the great thing about home theater is that once you get your base components like your speakers and receiver, you can slowly add on these other components as your budget allows. In the end, putting together your own home theater can be a lot of fun and it will definitely be a great learning experience with a big reward. Just remember that as hard as you might try, a home theater is never truly complete and you're always going to have that itch to upgrade and perfect your setup. So with that said, I think it's probably time to wrap up this video. So we hope that this video has been helpful in answering some of your home theater questions. And if you have any more, please let us know down in the comment section below and we'll do our best to help you out. If you thought this video was helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.